In today's video, I'm going to explain overhead and profit, everything you need to know for your business. This video is for both homeowners and contractors. I want to explain what overhead and profit is, why insurance companies pay in overhead and profit, why they don't pay, who is greedy behind the scenes, who is trying to pocket money. They should not be pocketing all of that in today's video. What is overhead and profit? Overhead and profit is a line item in insurance estimate in home improvement industry. It's very simple. You file a claim in the case something happened to your house, hail, storm, hurricane, whatever it is, your property has a damage, you call the insurance, they got out, they pretty much agree to do the work. They say, yeah, you're gonna find a contractor, we're gonna pay for the work. They're gonna issue one of these estimates this was original, this actually my company right here, we did the job. So this job started with a $4,453. Uh, that was original estimate and final estimate ended up being $27,155. Uh, big, big change, but a lot of times uh, scope of work increases dramatically. Insurance adjuster comes out, sees just very few things, maybe one slope. We come out, we talk to them, they're like, oh yeah. It's way bigger. It's just like fixing your car or fixing your body. You get to the hospital, you start with something, and then they diagnose and they find more things. So some claims can be really complicated, depends of kind of house you have, but all of them uh, will have something called overhead and profit. And overhead and profit usually is not included in the original estimate. And overhead and profit also have been really big debate between contractors and insurance companies because some homeowners don't understand it and accusing contractors of being greedy. Some insurance companies think contractors are being greedy. So pretty much everybody's pointing fingers at a contractor like, hey, you don't need that. We'll pay you enough already. Homeowners look at the number like this. It's like, hey, Dimitri, it's $27,000 for a contractor. You know, just be thankful for what you get. Well, let me explain to you and show you why overhead and profit, while it sounds really big, it's not actually that big. So here's the deal. Overhead and profit usually comes in the formula of 10 and 10. As a matter of fact, on the State Farm, on the very first page of their estimate, they give you like an example of what you're gonna get prior, you know, when they pretty much open the claim. <laughs> Funny enough, State Farm is one of the worst companies out there that never pay over hand of profit. I believe last year they shorting my business over hundred thousand dollars in overhead and profit alone. Huge loss. I mean Options are go after them, hire a lawyer, probably spend the 100K, just chasing 100K. Not always win-win for me, so we drop those uh, case. I mean, it's cost of business almost, but it's a 10% for overhead and 10% for profit. To understand overhead and profit, you need to understand how we contractors bid on our jobs. Usually, we calculate materials, in the roofing business and a lot of other trades out there, it's about 30% of the job. Materials, about 30% of the job. Labor is gonna be about 30% of the job. So you're probably thinking, well, if labor and materials is your major cost, it's 30% each, it's a 40% gross profit margin. You're right, it is. So I would say this number up to this point is pretty accurate, it's about 40%. And from that point, it breaks something like this. Sales guy, sales representative for the company gets about 10%. A lot of sales reps in the roofing industry are independent, just like doctors in the hospitals are 1099 employees. So technically they work for the hospital, but they're not employee of the hospital. They're independent, so they get paid, you know, in different pay structure. So in the roofing business and the construction business, a lot of times it's a commission based only. So sales guy don't earn anything unless he sells something, just like real estate agents. It goes in many, many industries. Now, 10% goes towards overhead and 10% goes towards profit, clear profit. So your net profit should be about 10% and it varies. I covered in the last video that good profitable company will net profit of up to 15%, but it can be actually as low as seven. We're not losing last 10%, it just fluctuates. Like for example, your overhead can be slightly bigger. Your profit can be 12%. Your commission, some people pay their commissions a little bit higher. It can be 12, 13, 15%. It doesn't really matter where 10% goes. 
the rough numbers are there. Your material can be a little bit more, your labor can be a little bit more, job per job, your, your gross profit can be more. I mean, everything is fluctuates. The 10% is just margin of error. You never know what's gonna go wrong. It's construction, something always don't go as planned. So now, let's talk about overhead of any company with a, let's say two, three million plus gonna have, which is not, it's only two, 300 roofing jobs per year. So you're gonna have marketing expenses, you're gonna have warehouse expenses. This is my warehouse right here, where I'm spending about $3,200 per month, about 4,000 square feet here. You know, you have gas and fuel, we provide uh, vehicles to our guys, we pay fuel. Uh, my gas and fuel bill right now, it's you know anywhere between two and three thousand dollars a month you have insurance expenses insurance can be very very high i mean i've paid insurance sometimes you know they do audit i mean it can be fifty hundred thousand a year bill then you have administrative expenses your different subscriptions stuff like quickbooks stuff like your crm it adds up really really quick then you have office supplies i mean I always joke that I'm a, like, it's a 2019, I'm a paperless company, I don't print anything, but sometimes I come to my office and my employees printing books here and it drives me crazy every single time, but I, I cannot even tell you how much money I spend on printing expenses. Like I literally can start printing books here. Then you have to train your sales guys, your employees, so you buy different online subscriptions to train them or maybe you travel with them on different training. You you know you have days where nobody is paying you, and you do have expense to train uh, your guys. You know whether they're hourly employee or salary or it doesn't really matter. Did I have insurance twice? I have insurance twice because I actually have different insurances here. Actually, you will have probably like three, four insurances. You have car insurance, you have uh, general liability insurance, work time insurance. I mean stuff like insurance for your tools, all of that. So insurance twice, not gonna take it out because we do have a lot of insurance expenses. Overall guys, this is your overhead and overhead is what kills a lot of businesses because sometimes we don't see trees through the forest. We were busy, we think here, like for example, if you have $10,000 job here and material cost three and labor cost three, you think, oh, I just made $4,000. But what if you only do two of those jobs you know, per week? What if it rains for two weeks? I mean, your bills don't stop coming. You always get those charges. Your overhead is always there. You already have agreement with your receptionist, how much she's getting paid per hour, that she, you, know, you guarantee her 40 hours a week. Maybe she's a salary employee, all of that stuff. So now we go back to insurance company and we're trying to negotiate with them on the jobs because you as a homeowner are not paying us, insurance is paying us, but insurance always have excuse not to pay. Here's a few excuses what insurance companies use and not to pay overhead and profit. One, they say, well, you only have one trade. We don't owe you overhead and profit. We, want, we only pay overhead and profit when you have two or three trades. Listen, if you're an insurance company, I have a message for you. Does any of this goes away? If I do 200 roofing jobs per year and it's just one trade. No, it stays. How many trades per job has nothing to do with my overhead? And my bill for my warehouse is gonna go away just because I don't do painting on a certain job. No, and my reception is gonna charge me less because we only schedule one crew instead of two crews. No, and my production manager is gonna get paid less because he scheduled one crew per job versus two. No. All of my overhead and staying there. And also, why should I not make money on a job? Why should I not collect the profit on the job if it's only one trade? I mean, this is my business model. I don't want to have five trades per job. I mean, if I do, if, if homeowners has siding and gutters and all of that, sure. But it has nothing to do with profitability of the business or overhead. Absolutely nothing. It's irrelevant. But insurance companies use it all the time. I don't think it's legal. I don't think it's moral, but they do. They pretty much say you have to have, a, it depends by insurance company. Some of them say couple trades or whatever. I'm telling you this, even if you have one trade, you have legal argument to argue with insurance company that they owe overhead and profit because it doesn't change. This does not change if it's one or three trades. Now, some insurance companies say, well, this job was not complex enough. You pretty much just made two phone calls and 
you know, I mean, they use every argument in the book, every excuse in the book. Again, my co complexity of the job has nothing to do with my overhead, nothing to do with my bills, nothing to do with what I do day to day. I mean, my overhead is there and I'm, I'm in business. I need to make profit. Otherwise, I'm going to be closing doors and who's going to be serving those customers anyway? Who's going to be taking care of insured? And then, uh, because it's a roofing business and it's a roofing channel, I want to talk about this excuse. They say that roofing doesn't really count. They say that, well, it's already included. It's only one trade. You're only doing roofing. And, and it's also a lot of BS, guys. Uh, Xactimate does not include overhead and profit in the roofing trade. If your insurance company, you have a proof that it, it is included, please comment below, send me email, and I would like to review it, but I'm telling you right now that roofing trade in, in the insurance paperwork, in the Xactimate paperwork does not include overhead and profit. Now, who is greedy here? Is the contractor still greedy, you think? Because we only have three parties involved. We have insurance company, we have homeowner, and we have a contractor. Again, everybody's pointing finger at the contractor. As a matter of fact, insurance company often goes to the homeowner and say, well, if your contractor is not gonna do it without overhead and profit, we have contractors who will. And I'm pretty sure they do. There is a lot of contractors who don't wanna be making money, who don't care if they're in business next year or not, who will eat deductible, who will do the job for the bare minimum. There's guys out there. I want to be in business five years from now. I owe it to my clients. I don't want to put my business in jeopardy. Last year, guys, my business ate $170,000 in overhead and profit. We collected some, we collected over half, but $170,000, it's my loss for one year. And that's with me collecting, like this job right here, we collected on that one, but it was a fight and it's not an easy fight. So my answer and what I see in the industry, the greediest out of all, it's insurance. Number one, the greediest bastards out there, they just don't care about industry. They don't want to take care of the homeowners or the contractors because when you screw in the contractor, you're actually doing a big disservice to the homeowner as well. Because when contractor is not profitable, when his overhead is not met, he's going to be out of business. You're just contributing to the failure in the industry because in seven years, 90% of the contractors are out of business. This is one of the reasons why. This is the reason. Because when contractor is profitable, he can pay his employees well, he can pay his bills on time, he's not suffering financially, he moves on, he takes care of the customers. Now, when the customers taken care of, you know, they give contractor more business, everybody prosper, it's all good. Now, what's happening when you take, you know, 20% and you're just shorting them? Of course, you greedy, you know, you pocket all those money, and now homeowners getting screwed actually as well. So now with all fairness, homeowners can be greedy too. I see it happening all the time and not many people talking about it, especially not on YouTube or Facebook, but homeowner also a lot of times look at the paperwork and they just judge you. They look at it, it can be $10,000 sometimes, it can be $30,000. And we have bills not paid here. I mean, in five years, I have two customers who did not pay me the full amount. We took them to court, settled, you know, we got paid. but. Homeowner will look at $30,000 and they're like, mm, materials were only 10, labor was only 10. I already paid you enough. I'm just gonna pocket, you know, like 20%. And they literally telling contractors like, you got enough, just be happy for what you got. I don't believe I owe you. Well, legally they have to pay, but morally when people see those checks in their names, because insurance actually pay homeowner, something triggers, they all of a sudden have little amnesia that they have to actually write a check to the contractor and they decided to keep money. I personally had the clients who told me like, Dimitri, I'm sorry, I spent the money. I'm like, what do you mean you spend the money? He's like, Dimitri, I spent the money. You know, it was a lot of money written to my name and like I spend it, I don't have it. I'm like, well, we're going to do a payment plan, but I'm not walking away from $6,000 final payment. It's like Dimitri, but you get like $35,000. Amount guys don't matter. Okay. I get you. Like I, I got it. So you think $35,000 is a lot of money. Do you want to help me? Do you want me to send you a bill for my insurance? Work on when I get $50,000 bill and I don't have it in my bank because of customers like that. 
if you want to look how much you pay me, I'm going to start showing you some bills that I pay and you will be blown away. You'll be like, I don't want to be in that business because everybody's looking here and nobody's looking here. And this is the hard part. This is the reason overhead and profit exists, right? It was not born by our greed. It was born out of necessity and somebody's definitely taking advantage of it. So now can contractors become greedy? Absolutely. I'm not going to defend contractors on the channel because contractors also contribute to it, right? So contractors, a lot of times they supplement for items they didn't do. It's not moral. It's not right, but they don't do it. And my message to contractor, if you're sending one of this to insurance company or show it to the homeowner, make sure you can back up every item every single time. If you're not going to do it, it's not for the homeowner to find out or insurance company, hey, you didn't do it. It's your job and it's your responsibility to triple check your estimate that, hey, I did everything and I'm charging for every item. If you didn't do it, guess what? Call the freaking insurance company and say, hey, I didn't do that part, take it away. It can be 500 bucks, it can be 5,000. You know who you are, you know what you do. I've, seen, I've met way too many guys who is screwing insurance companies and homeowners and charging for the stuff they didn't do. Don't make us look bad. So contractors can be greedy. Also, if you do, don't have overhead, if you're working out of your garage, I mean, it's up to you how you do it. Like for me, the only contractors who should not be charging, and I'm not saying it in a way that, you know, you don't have legal right. You probably have legal right, but I wouldn't fight over it because if you truly don't have overhead, if, if you're a paper contractor working out of your house, you don't have sales guys, you, you keep your commissions, you keep your overhead, you are making 20, 30% of profit margins. I mean, maybe don't be greedy. Don't try to pursue, get too much attention to you because for me, it's just hard to justify. But if you're a legit business, good working contractor who takes care of his employees, who takes care of his business, who is in his city to stay and want to keep marketing and keep branding and keep, you know, growing his warehouses and stuff, then for sure you do need overhead and profit just to stay in business. So I want to end this video with a huge, huge credit to a guy named Steve Patrick. He is one of the veterans in, on this topic. He actually wrote a book about overhead and profit. So check out the group on the Facebook. It's called Level the Playing Field. Pretty much the whole group is best resource for the contractor who's trying to get overhead and profit, who's fighting that wall or hit that wall and fighting uh, insurance companies and don't know how to get overhead and profit. Steve Patrick is one of the best guys in the industry who knows how to make insurance companies pay. And I want to finish with a message to the homeowners. If you look at the paperwork and you think it's a lot of money, don't let the numbers block you with a good experience with your contractor. If you're happy with the work, if company did everything they said they're supposed to do, like be on your contractor side, not on your insurance company side. Insurance company won't save money for them, not for you. Your contractor deserves to get paid. It's not your money either. It's your insurance company money. You've been paying premiums. Let your contractor be profitable, be successful, and he will take care of all your future needs for years to come. You don't want your contractor to be in jeopardy, to be out of business. So that's my message for you guys. I would like to hear from you. What do you guys think about this topic? What do you don't agree? Maybe this is social media world. You're not going to offend me with a negative comment. Comment below. I would like to start conversation. I like negative comments. I read all my comments. Give me one of those or one of those, whether you agree or disagree. And I'll see you guys in the next video.